Good afternoon. Welcome, everyone. My name is Elian Ramos. I'm ER Geek Goddess on Twitter, and I'll be your host today. Um, as you know, the Affordable Care Act, um, the deadline is approaching really fast here, and we want to make sure that Latinos have the correct information and that they get themselves and their families enrolled. And for the past couple of weeks, a group of, a group of bloggers uh, in partnership with Consumer Reports in Espanol have been posting their health stories uh, online. And today, some of those bloggers are going to have the opportunity to ask their questions directly with none other um, than Secretary of Health and Human Services, Kathleen Sevillas. And I have the honor to uh, welcome uh, Secretary Sevillas to our chat. How are you, Secretary? Welcome I'm very to the well, chat. thank you. How are you? Thanks so much for um, taking the time to be with us today. You bet. Glad to do it. it. Appreciate it. Um, and uh, as a reminder, I'm going to do a couple of logistics things here. Uh, if you miss any part of this broadcast, we're going to be able to watch it again on YouTube on my channel, which is youtube.com slash user slash Elian Ramos. Also, Julie diaz Asper is handling our chat, and we'll be posting a blog post with your questions uh, and answers later on my blog. Um, so we don't have the secretary for a long time, so I'm going to go right into introducing the bloggers for them to share their questions. Um, but before that, secretary, if you have a, any comments to say before we start. Well, I'm just glad to have a chance to join all of you today. And I want to thank you for making sure that this very important information gets out to your audiences. Your voices are very powerful, so thank you for letting me join you. Oh, we're so honored that you're here with us today. Um, so our bloggers today, uh, I'm going to introduce them. The first one is Laurita Tellado. She's Laurita86 on Twitter. Uh, she's a blogger, a freelance writer, and also a very passionate advocate for Spina Bifida. Her blog is holdingoutforahero.org. The second blogger we have today is Denise Icaza. Denise is a mother of three, and she's expecting a fourth child. Wow. <laughs> I was one of four. It works very well as a child. <laughs> And Denise is uh, the founder and editor-in-chief of ahorrosparamama.com. Welcome, Denise. Thank and you. last but not least is Helen Troncoso, who is um, Miss New York America 2012. Uh, she's a doctor of physical therapy and a health and wellness coach, and she's also a women's health advocate. So Great. welcome, ladies. Uh, we're going to go right into the questions so that we can take advantage of the time for um, the secretary. Uh, Denise, you're up first. Thank you so much for being with us, Secretary Sevilius. Um, and I'd like to know if you can please share with us uh, where we can find income guidelines and how to qualify for the uh, subsidies, and also if there's any penalty for not registering on time, and if so, how much? Well, great questions. Um, if you go to the website, uh, healthcare.gov, or the Spanish version of the website, cuidadodesalud.gov, uh, you can find out on the learn side approximately what your family would qualify for in terms of financial help. Uh, it's based on family income and numbers of members of your family, so there is no one set number. but. It's approximately if you make less than about $46,000 as an individual or about $92,000 as a family of four, you qualify for some financial help, which can lower your premiums month in and month out. Um, you asked about the penalty, and if people do not sign up by midnight on March 31st, next Monday, and they can afford coverage, which means that they spend less than about 8% of their family income on health insurance. Uh, then they're responsible for paying a fee when they pay their taxes next year. And that's really so that um, if they come in through the doors of an emergency room, if they end up in the hospital without an ability to pay the bills and somebody else picks up that cost, they're chipping back in to help out because we can't pick and choose when we get sick. 
Thank you so much. Sure. That is so true. We cannot pick and choose. And, and to talk a little bit about that in, in her condition is Laura. Laura, can you ask your question, please? Uh, first off, thank you so much, Secretary Sibelius. It is a huge honor and a privilege. Um, I'm very humbled and appreciative. Um, okay, so my question to you, I'm 27 years old and I was born with spina bifida and hydrocephalus, uh, which, by the way, is, is more common among Latinos than any other ethnic group. As a child, I had frequent hospitalizations, and at a point in my life, it was nearly every other week I was hospitalized. How will the Affordable Care Act address lifetime caps on spending by insurance companies that cover people like me who experience repeated hospital stays and surgeries? Well, first of all, I'm, I'm incredibly impressed that you are um, able to do so well with that series of challenges uh, in, in your lifetime of health and that you're willing to now turn around and put your experiences to work uh, for other people. So thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, I would say that uh, you know the Affordable Care Act, which the president signed four years ago, is a brand new world for anyone with a pre-existing condition. Uh, your spina bifida and hydrocephalus uh, issues are pretty serious uh, and clearly challenging along the way. There are cancer survivors, people who have had a heart attack. Uh, folks who suffer from asthma, diabetes, all kinds of chronic conditions. In fact, one out of every two Americans has some condition that an insurance company regards as a pre-existing medical condition. So good news is that for individuals purchasing their own coverage, uh, insurance companies never again will be able to deny coverage based on a pre-existing health condition. Big step forward. Uh, it started with children several years ago, now it applies to everyone. Those days are over and that's good news. The second piece of good news is that the Affordable Care Act made sure that there are no longer caps on a lifetime of a policy because the worst thing that happens is that you pay your premiums, you think you're being responsible only to find out that you run out of coverage when you need it the mm -hmm. most. So no lifetime caps and gradually annual caps are being phased out so that people will know up front how much they can possibly spend out of pocket. They will know that their illness is going to be taken care of. They know that when they buy an insurance policy, it has a full range of benefits, and they can't be dumped out or locked out of the market with a pre-existing health condition. So the law has really made a huge difference already in millions of people's lives. That's good news for everyone. You bet. Um, Yes. So now we have uh, Helen, and Helen is going to ask her question. She's been um, talking about and writing about women's health issues. So Helen, go ahead and ask your question. Hi, Secretary Sevilius. Thank you so much Hi, for your time. My question is, a woman has the right to choose what's best for her life. How will the new health care law help women to access reproductive services? Well, again, the, the health care law, for the first time, uh, said that insurance policies have to include a range of services important to women's health. So we at the Department of Health and Human Services, having gotten that direction, asked the Institute of Medicine, doctors, nurses, researchers, experts in the field, to look at the typical insurance policy, but to then tell us what was missing that women often needed. Why were these plans not uh, satisfactory for women? There are now eight new benefits, uh, contraception coverage, uh, uh, lactation support for nursing mothers, domestic violence screening, mental health screening, uh, issues that often were not covered that women were paying for out of their own pockets because they were services and supports that women needed. All insurance policies will now include those as part of the benefit package. And insurance companies can no longer charge women more than men. What I like to say is being a woman is no longer a pre-existing condition. So it's, again, a brand new world. The policies include services that we need and want and need to keep healthy, and we can't be charged more than men just because of our gender. And that's good news for everyone as well. We all have women in our lives who can benefit from this. And we all happen to be women. 
Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Very important. Um, and, and also, there's, there's another, and I have this is my last question for you, Secretary. Um, and the question comes because there's been a lot of confusion around the immigration statuses and, and obtaining health insurance under the Affordable Care Act. And so my question to you is, what are the guidelines for families who have mixed status in their, within their members? Um, what are, how can they qualify for this? Sure. I'm so glad you asked me because I know that has been a, a great point of confusion and concern in the Latino community across the country. Uh, anyone who is a legal resident, anyone who is a citizen, qualifies for the health plans and should register for the health plans. Having said that, I know that there are lots of mixed status families where there may be uh, some who are in legal status, some who are undocumented. We would urge everyone to come forward and enroll whoever in the family is eligible. Uh, there may be uh, children who are eligible in a family where parents are not. There may be one spouse eligible and one spouse not. No information, no information given to qualify for health care or qualify for a tax subsidy will be used for anything else. And I know that's been a concern. If I turn over information about citizenship status, will that somehow be shared with the Immigration Department? Uh, the Secretary of Homeland Security has put on his uh, page, uh, official government page, he has shared with us, we have it on our government page, the very firm declaration that no information given for health insurance will be shared with anybody else. It is only to qualify people for health insurance. So parents, please register your eligible children. Spouses should feel very comfortable uh, getting insured and qualifying for plans that they are able to obtain and no one should worry that this information is being shared outside of the health system. Wow, and that, that's, that's something that our community needs to be aware of because exactly. I know in, in mm -hmm. my case I get questions like that all the time. Um, I will be posting, uh, as a reminder, a, a list of resources for my speakhispanic.wordpress.com blog uh, listing all of these these uh, different resources that the secretary just mentioned, and I know we're running out of time, secretary, and I know that we have so um, you know you have so much to do um, always with the deadline approaching. But I wanted to thank you so much for taking these minutes to talk to us. Um, I know that the bloggers are thrilled for to be here and to and to be able to ask you this directly. And um, I would like to ask you if you have any um, comments before we go. Well, again, thank you for your willingness to take this information and share it with your audiences. It's so very important. Your voices are very important in your communities, uh, much more important than mine. Uh, secondly, anything you can do to remind people that the website is working smoothly and easily. Cuidadodesalud.gov is up and running smoothly. Uh, healthcare.gov is easy to access. The toll-free hotline has callers available in English and Spanish at 1-800-318-2596. And finally, if you go to the website under localhelp.gov, findlocalhelp.gov, you can put in a zip code and figure out who in your neighborhood could be able to sit down with you and your family and answer questions. But Monday the 31st is the deadline. We know that Hispanics are the largest population of uninsured and eligible uh, residents in this country. So there's a lot to be gained in terms of health security and financial security. So take advantage of the opportunity. And thank you so much for sharing these resources. And thank you um, all of you for watching today. Uh, please do share this information. Uh, there's 10 million Latinos who can benefit from the Affordable Care Act, and we want to make sure that everybody gets the proper health coverage. Um, I want to thank the bloggers for being here too, Denise, Helen, and Laurita. Also, Julie, for manning the chat room. And uh, thank you to Secretary Sevilius for taking the time again. Uh, have a great afternoon, everyone, and, and I see you around on online. <laughs> Thank, Bye -bye. You. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, Secretary. Thank you, Leon. Thank you. Thank you. Gracias. Thank you.